Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. Respiratory virus detection hinges on many factors, among them the type of sample collected the time to collection after symptom onset, and the transport and storage of the sample prior to testing. Sample collection and storage are critical components to respiratory virus testing. Improper sampling may result in an inadequate sample rendering a diagnostic test inconclusive or incorrect. This is the swab used to sample the mid-turbinate it's a special swab available with a stopper on the shaft indicating the depth of sampling at the turbinates. The mid-turbinate swab guides the collector to the proper depth in order to ensure that the proper depth is reached. There are two sizes of the mid-turbinate swab, one for neonates and infants up to three years old, and the larger one for patients age three and older. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. Check for nasal obstructions that may interfere with sampling at the correct site in the nose. Open the swab package and remove the swab. For this mid-turbinate sample, gently insert the swab into the nostril inside the nares and use a gentle rotation to firmly sample the membranes of the nasal wall. The stopper on the swab shaft indicates the depth of sampling required. Avoid touching the swab applicator below the molded breakpoint as this could lead to contamination and incorrect results. Gently remove the swab from the patient. Remove the screw cap from the tube and insert the swab into the transport container all the way to the bottom of the tube. Holding the swab shaft close to the rim of the tube and keeping the tube away from the face, break the swab shaft at the pre-molded break point. Screw the cap on tightly to prevent leakage and dispose of the swab shaft in a regular trash receptacle. Apply patient identification label or write patient information on the tube label. Follow the standard operating procedures of transport and testing in your facility. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. Please note that the UTM liquid medium maintains the viability of diverse viruses. 
Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.